So, hello. We are now in the ORS laboratory here at Menlo, and I want to show you how the systems look in real life. So, what you have here, it's an um, ultra-stable laser, what we call an uh, ORS, which is based on an ECDL laser. And um, so, this one in particular has a 12.1 centimeter cylindrical cavity, which is also 60 uh, millimeters in diameter, and this goes in the vacuum chamber that we will show in just a second. But just to break down uh, a bit each of the part, parts of the, of the ORS, so here what you see is an oscilloscope, which is used for monitoring, also for the error signal of the, of the PDH log. Uh, what you see here is um, the drawer, which has the ECTL laser, so we can basically log to a cavity any laser in between 500 nanometers and 2,000 nanometers. Um, but yeah, if it is in the C band or around 1060 nanometers, uh, what we have instead of an ECDL laser is a butterfly diode based on a Rio Planex. So you wouldn't see this part here, so we will show it in, in a second, uh, at one for 1542. So the next thing that you see here is the uh, controller of the ion getter pump. And also, there is uh, a way of connecting an Ethernet cable so that you can also work um, remotely or connect it to some other device, and uh, a port for a camera basically to monitor the DM mode. Apart from this, just below, we have the universal synchro platform, which is, uh, as I said, a universal uh, locking electronics platform that we use in most of our, in most of our device. And the, just underneath, uh, what you see here is where the vacuum chamber and the cavity is. So this box is the acoustic isolation, and this is the anti-vibration isolation platform. And what you see here is a um, uh, special setup because this is for a dual input um, in-coupling platform. But in general, if you work with one, uh, one wavelength, it will look a bit different. But here you can see no, all the optics, and then what you we'll see uh, at the back is the vacuum chamber with the ion getter pump that is just over there. And then inside goes the ULE, ULE cavity. So what you see here is um, our ORS at uh, 1542 nanometers. So this is based on a um, um, diode laser, a uh, Rio Planex usually. And this is the size that we um, at which we manufacture those that have this type of uh, this type of laser. So it's a bit the footprint is a bit smaller than the one that you just saw, and uh, yeah, but the configuration is uh, basically uh, basically the same. So what we are going to do now is to connect the output of this ultra stable laser via a fiber, and we are going to connect it to a optical frequency comb. And what we want to see is this uh, the CW bit, so that you can really see how the purity of this laser is transferred, and then also test that the line width of the laser is one hertz. So um, what you see here is uh, our most compact frequency comb, and uh, just uh, a, brief, a brief introduction to it. So in its core, a frequency comb is a femtosecond laser, which has fully stabilized the repetition rate, which in this case is 100 megahertz, and also it has fully stabilized the carrier envelope of the frequency, the CO. And uh, what we want to show here is how the purity of the ultra stable laser that you just saw can be transferred to the to the frequency comb, and then the modes of this of this laser will uh, shrink up to one hertz, which is the line width of the ultra stable laser. So for that, we have already connected um, our, our ultra-stable laser, the ORS, at uh, 1542. But for now, it is still, this uh, device is still is pre-running, so we haven't changed the login target. What you see here is a spectrum analyzer, and basically this signal is uh, the free-running free bit. So this, what you see here, is uh, directly related to the line width of the cone modes. And so uh, in this screen, what we have is the center at uh, 30 megahertz and a span of one megahertz. 
So this implies that the um, free-running smart com has a language for the modes of around 100 kilohertz. But if instead of um, having this uh, free-running device, we lock it to the ultra-stable laser, you will see how it changes. So we do it in a second. And then you see that this has shrink a lot. And of course, uh, now you cannot see, but if we change the span to 10 hertz, and then very quickly the bandwidth, you will very nicely see how these uh, modes have become one hertz. And also you can see that the ultra-stable laser has the same language. So that's all. Thanks. <laughs>